Hi, this is Janet from Paper and Spark. Welcome to part four of our video tutorial series on how to use your inventory cost and pricing spreadsheet. If you don't have an inventory cost and pricing spreadsheet, they're available for sale at paperandspark.com. So now you see how we calculate the overhead rate. How the spreadsheet gets is $2.49. It's basically the sum of all these plus the sum of all these divided by your 350. That gives me $2.49. So my 249 is going to flow directly to my pricing formula tab. It's going to be flowing right here where it says suggested overhead rate from overhead tab. Okay, now I'm going to switch to viewing our spreadsheet with our sample data in it so that I can show you something important about overhead rates. So, like I said, the blue overhead rate tab is going to link directly here. However, it is not going to link directly here. This is a manual column. This are manual cells where you can put in whatever overhead rate you want. You can make it be zero. You can make it be higher than the suggested overhead rate. You can make it be lower. You can even switch it up depending on which type of product you're doing. Maybe you want it to be $249 for some types of products, but lower or higher for others. I want you to have the flexibility, and I didn't want it to be linked to a hard number, because every year or every few months, you need to go in and reevaluate these numbers and your overhead rate. You need to go in and say, okay, I was totally off with my budgeted annual business expenses, or I was totally off with my estimated products created. I think my overhead rate needs to be higher or it needs to be lower, whatever. I want you to have the ability to change that as your business grows. And if it's linked here, then every time you change it, it's going to change your retail prices for every product you have listed here and throw your whole spreadsheet off. Because as you grow with this spreadsheet, you're going to have products listed here that you've already listed on Etsy for a certain price or that you've sold. And so if you go back and change the overhead rate for everybody, it's going to throw off your retail price across the board. That's why I let you see what your overhead rate tab suggests here and then you can go in and say I want it to be this I want it to be this it can be whatever you want it to be and of course if you just want to go in and say okay my tab says it should be 249 let's make it be 249 you can just make it that rate for everybody so now that we have thoroughly covered what the overhead rate means and how you can calculate it and change it as necessary, let's move on to the rest of our pricing formula. Our next component in the formula is going to be your wholesale markup and your retail markup. And I use the words markup or multiplier interchangeably here. You can see that the formula has both a wholesale markup and a retail markup rate and you can calculate both a price for selling at the wholesale level or the retail level. The retail price is the price that you want to sell your product to the public at. That's the price that you'd list your item for on Etsy, on your shop's website, in a brick and mortar shop, in your town, um, etc, etc. The wholesale price is the price that you'd um, obviously sell your product at on the wholesale level. So that'd be like to another business who might be reselling your product in their own store, or it might be the price that you use um, if you're selling your product in bulk at a bulk discount. You should never sell to the public at your wholesale price. Even if you have no plans of ever selling your products at the wholesale level, you still don't want to do it. It's a bad idea. You'd be pricing your products too low and you don't leave yourself any room to grow. Um, you also, uh, if you use the retail price, that allows you the extra cushion to offer sales and discount codes. 
And if you start out pricing too low around the wholesale price, you don't have room to do those sorts of things without eating into your profits. So moving on from that brief discussion on pricing theory, you have the ability to actually change the wholesale markup and the retail markup rate. Um, your spreadsheet is going to come with the industry standard kind of of two and four as the markups for wholesale and retail respectively, but you can actually go in and change those numbers on a product by product basis if you wanted to. The formulas are not locked here. So you can go as high or as low as you want. After you've adjusted or not adjusted your wholesale and retail markup rates, you're pretty much finished. You're left with a completed wholesale price and a completed retail price based on everything else that you've already entered in this formula. If for some reason you don't like the price that the formula has calculated, um, you can't go in and change this cell directly because it is locked, but you can simply adjust the markup rate until you get to a price that you're comfortable with. Now, I will also add that there's hidden formulas in here that round your wholesale price and your retail price up or down to the nearest dollar amount. I think that um, it's, it's easier and cleaner to sell your products at a whole dollar amount, but I know not everybody necessarily agrees with this, so if you'd like that formula to be changed so that um, you can price at half dollar amounts or tenth of a dollars or maybe you don't want it to round at all all you need to do is email me and I'll change that for you just a, a brief word about pricing since we've finished calculating our prices here on this tab pricing can be a controversial topic I think that underpricing runs rampant in the creative industry especially online and pricing for profit, covering all of your business's expenses, is the key to building a sustainable creative business that can grow with you into the future. Um, I won't get really in depth about pricing in this video because I talk about it both in the PDF instructions for the spreadsheet and I talk about it a lot on my blog. So if you're struggling with pricing or you're having issues not feeling comfortable with the prices that you're getting here based on your inputs, I highly recommend you check my blog out at paperandspark.com. Okay, so now that you have a sales price or the retail price for your finished good, your product information is going to flow to this purple inventory tab. This tab's pretty straightforward. It simply lists your product's description, the cost of goods made, which is the cost of making that product, and the retail price that you're selling that finished product at. You have the ability to add a few other useful uh, data points. First, you can add a product ID if you want. These are just product IDs that I made up for my example business here. Um, this could be any sort of unique product code that you like to use for your business. You can leave it blank if you don't feel like doing that part as well. You can enter the date that you list this product online in your shop or whatever date you put it up for sale. And you can also enter the date that the product sells on um, so you can keep track of what's sold on this inventory list and what's not. Due to the way that this tab flows onto your sales tabs, you need to enter the date sold in a specific format to make sure the spreadsheet works correctly. And that basic, that the format that you need to enter it in is basically um, as shown here as numbers and slashes and not as words. Um, so don't type out January use one and it doesn't matter if you do zero one or just one the only thing that matters is that you enter your date as a uh, numbers and slashes 
Um, another important thing to note about this tab is that it's got uh, filtering and sorting functions already built in. That's what these little arrows are. They allow you to um, sort or filter your data for certain uses. Um, there's a lot of different ways you could use this tool. You might want to filter to see only certain product IDs. Like let's say I want to only see um, my rings. You can go through and select all of the things that begin with R. And I know those are my rings. Or let's say I only want to see things that were listed in a certain month. Or let's say I only want to see items that haven't sold. So I will get rid of that. And now I'm left with just the items that haven't sold. Or maybe I only want to see items that have sold. So I'm going to get rid of all the blank items. So that's just a few things that you can do with the, the sorting and the filtering on this tab. Thank you.